Welcome back guys, JC here, and this is the very first of my Guide to video series. Look in the description below for a link to my playlist, as well as uh, some parts that I will leave links to that you may want to take a look at and consider you know, using. Today we will be talking about PDBs, and I'm not going to say which PDB is perfect because there is no such thing. We're all different, we have different wants and needs, opinions, uh, we even use different video transmitters, flight controllers, cameras. So uh, you will have to pick out one on your own, and hopefully this guide will help you. Whenever I pick a PDB, I kind of have a process that I go through. The very first thing I do is determine what cell battery I will be using. Almost all my multi I fly with a 4-cell LiPo, and 90% of PDBs can handle the voltage of a 4-cell battery. Uh, but if you want to go higher, like a 5- or 6-cell LiPo, then uh, not many can handle that high of a voltage. So in that case, you won't have much of a selection of PDBs, uh, but you can look around and find one. The other thing you can do is use a simple PDB like this with nothing on it. No uh, voltage regulators or on-screen displays or power filters, nothing. Uh, these have no voltage limit. And then what you can do is find a Pololu voltage regulator that will work for you. Uh, they make these in you know, many different models. Uh, you can find one that can handle the high voltage that you need and step the voltage down to 12 volts, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, uh, you name it. You can have one of those with 5 volts powering your flight controller and camera and then say like a 12 volt one powering your video transmitter. Uh, you can do it in any combination you want. After I've narrowed down some of the PDBs that will work for me, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is ask myself what features do I want. Uh, and some of the features will be uh, an on-screen display, an LC filter, current sensor, a 5 volt and 12 volt regulator to power other accessories, sometimes an adjustable voltage regulator if I need something other than 5 or 12 volts, and there's even more features than that, but that's the basics. So then I will try to find a PDB that has the as many of those features as I can find, but chances are you won't find a PDB with all of those because there's just not enough space on them. Usually you will find one with two or three of those features, and then you'll have to add in the rest either through a flight controller or externally uh, with stuff like this. So just take a look at a few of these. Uh, this one here has a 5 and 12 volt voltage regulator. It also has a built-in LC filter which will clean up your video feed. The great thing is you can actually power your, you can choose the voltage for your camera and video transmitter separately. So this, these pins here are for the camera and you will place a drop of solder on either 5 volt or 12 volt uh, and the middle pad. So if I want 5 volts for my camera, I will just bridge both these pads together and then I have 5 volts coming out of this pin. Then for my video transmitter, uh, say I want 12 volts, bridge both of these pads and then I have 12 volts coming out of here. Then I uh, wire in the grounds and the signals and my on-screen displays and then everything is filtered. If you just want a simple PDB with just a 5 volt or 12 volt regulator and that's it, uh, then you can get something cheap like this one. If you want a current sensor, uh, the best way to spot a current sensor is with this resistor here. They usually say 0M50 and these are actually current sensing resistors. So you will wire in your main battery leads. All the current will flow through this resistor first and then go to the ESC pads, your regulators and everything else. This will actually convert that amperage into a signal that the flight controller can understand with this uh, pin here that says C sense and then you just place that wire on your uh, current pin on your flight controller and that tells it what the current is. You do have to calibrate it and I do have a video showing you how to do that in my beta flight playlist. Now say you find a PB that has uh, an on-screen display and current sensor but it does not have a LC filter. Well you can add one of those in uh, with something like this, you know, these are cheap, small, uh, they're only like $2.50. You can just uh, run power directly off of your PDB where it's getting the full voltage of the battery to this and then on the outside run this to your video transmitter. Say you find one with the LC filter and the voltage regulators and a current sensor but it doesn't have an on-screen display. Well you can add one of these in with uh, this minimum OSD micro or you can use a flight controller that has one built in. You find one with everything you want except for a current sensor. Well, some flight controllers actually have current sensors built into the flight controller itself. Uh, now, I, I don't recommend those because uh, your main battery leads will have to run to the flight controller first, and then you will have to use the same gauge wire going from the flight controller 
back to the PDB to then power your ESCs and everything else. So it's it's a lot of wiring and it's really a lot of thick wires. Once you have picked a PDB with as many features uh, as you want and then you've also figured out how you're going to add in the other features that it does not have, then the next thing I do is uh, pick one with the best pad layout. Just for example, out of these, I would say this one has the worst pad layout. The reason for this is because uh, all the ESC power wires have to go on this side and all the grounds have to go on this side. This means your ESCs coming in from this side, the power wire has to run across the PDB or you have to wrap it around and come in from the outside. And I, I just really hate doing that. And then same thing for the ESCs on this side. The ground wire will be wrapping across it or around it. Uh, and there's actually some with even worse pad layouts than this, like the RR OSD version 1. It just has one really big pad for power and one really big pad for ground. And uh, that's why I never purchased that one. Now they do make a version 2. Uh, you know, it's a PDB that has a, the on-screen display and a lot of other features, and it has a much, you know, it has a better pad layout. So uh, that one isn't too bad. The last thing we want to do is determine if uh, the PDB I use has anything on the bottom side of it or not. So, for example, this has stuff on both sides. Uh, personally, what I liked doing, instead of having my bottom plate on my frame and then using standoffs and then placing the PDB on top of the standoffs then having more standoffs and then putting my flight controller on top of that it makes things really high and I, I, I just don't like it so what I do is I place electrical tape on the back side of my PDBs and mount them directly to the frame then I just have one set of standoffs and the flight controller on top of that I personally choose to do that on all my builds but on some of my builds it's a requirement and I have to for example, on this frame, uh, you have to mount the PDB flat to the frame, and it's because it uses this little gel pad, and then the battery mounts on top of this, and this gel pad keeps the battery from ejecting. But if I were to use standoffs and then place a PDB on top of that, this gel pad would just fall through this hole, and it would be useless. And then just a couple other things I need to cover. Um, there are some PDBs made specifically for certain flight controllers, like this one here. This one here is the Seriously Dodo flight controller with the PDB made specifically for it. Uh, I say it's made just for this because it has pins coming out the PDB and you just snap the flight controller on top of it and then solder the pins to these motor output pins as well as the power and ground and then you have a uh, you know your power and ground going to your ESCs and then the small signal wire will run to these small pads so it makes things a super low profile and you can mount this directly to your frame which is great for like really small frames and builds there are also uh, some frames they offer a, a plate that you can swap out that has an integrated PDB meaning you can direct solder your uh, battery leads right to the bottom plate, uh, same for your motors and ESCs, and they even have a few voltage regulators built into the carbon plate. Now how am I personally doing this? Uh, on my builds, I just use a simple PDB like this. Well, how do I power my flight controllers? I use flight controllers that have the voltage regulator built into the flight controller. Uh, well, what about my on-screen display? This also has an on-screen display built in. Well, how do I power my video transmitters? I use video transmitters like the ReadyMade RC Cricket or the Lumineer and a few others. Uh, and these can accept up to 20 volts, meaning you can power these directly off of the PDB. Well, what about an LC filter? I, that's why I add in one of these small LC filters. I power this directly off the PDB and then I power the video transmitter off the LC filter. How do I power my camera without the 5 volts? These video transmitters have a uh, voltage regulator built into them that will kick out. It has another separate power wire that will produce 5 volts, and I power my camera off of that separate 5 volt wire. So doing things this way, I get my uh, you know, flight controller, video transmitter, and camera all powered with the correct voltage. I get my on-screen display, my LC filter. And that's all I really want. Uh, as far as current sensors, I personally don't use them. I, I hate having to calibrate them and 
I hate the wiring. I really think that they're a pain in the ass, but that's just me. Uh, now, if I ever do want to know what my current draw is, then I just use a little device like this. It has XD60 connectors on both ends, and then I plug one end into my multirotor, my battery into the other end, and all the current flows through this first. I strap my multirotor down to a table or something and give it full throttle, and this will show me exactly how many amps I'm drawing. Once I figure out how many amps I'm drawing, I just disconnect this, and then everything is good. So there's no need for me to have a current sensor. And that's basically it guys, so uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you could give me a like, look in the description below, I'll leave links to some products that I would consider using, as well as links to some other videos. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.